This is Steve. And this is Sean. This is Acromedia's High Five. So Steve, what are we going to talk about today? Config management, specifically with Drupal 8. With Drupal 8, because it doesn't exist any time before that. So, no. so um, how come, okay, before we get there, how come it did not exist up until this point? Because it's hard? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's I fair. mean, kind of, and also I think, I think at the start it wasn't like, a, it wasn't really a, a problem. You know, it was like, oh, we'll just save that in the database and that's not too bad. And, and you know, Drupal was smaller at the time and then, and then once it got to the point where everyone has, you know, a dev and a staging and, and mm -hmm. all these different versions and, you know, you need to have it review on staging and you want to test things and you can't just do them on live anymore. Now that kind of became a problem and it, it got to be more and more things where, okay, if you do this on staging, you have to redo it again on live. You know, oh, let's change this setting. Let's change this view so that it... Um, you know, we want to show 20 results instead of 10. That seems really minor, mm -hmm. you know, but we want to do it and just make sure it tests. And, you know, let's add this filter. Okay, the filter works. Well, now we have to add do exactly what we did on live. So either we, maybe we could export the view mm -hmm. and put it up, but maybe we did a change on live as well. So now we can't and we have to remember to redo it. Um, but hopefully we recorded exactly what we did, mm -hmm. you know, because pretty good chance that you recorded like most of what you did, but you forgot one step because you, you did that earlier or whatever, and so that didn't go up and stuff. And so okay. that's why it's really become sort of a, a problem that needed to be solved. I mean, initially there were just more important things, like they wanted content to go up and, you know, just have views to begin with. I mean, that only got, you know, um, put into core for eight as well, but I mean, even, you know, had to be a contrib module and stuff. So there were bigger sort of problems, and now config started to be one of the big problems. Okay, so mm -hmm. that being said, you know, if, if this, since this is a new thing, yeah. um, is everyone familiar with this problem? Um, probably yes or no. Probably everyone is familiar with the problem, um, not necessarily with the name and understanding it. Basically, it, what it is, is it's anytime you do something not on your live site, mm -hmm. and then you, you need to move it up to your live site now, it probably means you need to redo it because stuff has happened on your live site as well, so you can't just copy the whole database off. You've taken, you know, contact forms, you've, you know, people have talked on your forums, they've mm -hmm. posted comments, people have bought products, you know, anything that they do to interact with your site, and there's not really a very good way to say, okay, take these changes and put them up, but don't overwrite anything else that has already changed there. Okay. And so it just means that either people just do changes live, mm -hmm. you know, which you've probably done and screwed up at one point, you know, even mm -hmm. if you're just a site admin or something, you put that up and Ooh, that didn't actually work when I put it up, so let's just fix it quickly on live, you know, or you've done it on staging to avoid that, but then you still have to copy it up live and you've screwed it up at that point. So okay. you've probably experienced that even if you're sort of not aware that it's sort of a config management problem. Got it. And so, more or less, that problem of, you know, missing something or overwriting something or, mm -hmm. you know, something not being merged properly, that's, yeah. that's really what's being solved. Yeah. And also just the duplicate work of doing it and then doing it again, okay. too. But the, the biggest problem is, I mean, people can sort of get over the duplicate work. It's that you screw it up, too, mm -hmm. is the bigger concern. Um, but, I mean, you save work as well. So, that's what the whole thing is, is trying to solve. Got it. Mm -hmm. So, what else? Um, well, we'll go into sort of how it actually works then okay. or whatever. Um, so uh, all the config uh, for Drupal is still stored in the database when your site is actually running um, because that's faster than a bunch of files and stuff. But now what it has the ability to do is you can say, okay, take all my config, um, either for a certain section or for the whole site, um, and export it into a, a file that I can now move around between sites. Um, so that's a thing that you couldn't really do before. Um, so what you can do is you can say, okay, here's my staging site. Mm -hmm. Take my config from my whole staging site that I've done a whole bunch of work on over the last two months we've been doing changes. And we export that to a file, and then let's go to our live site, and let's import that. But when you import it, um, what it's going to do is it's going to sort of stage those files. So it's going to bring that config up, and mm -hmm. it's basically going to give you a big a list. And it's going to be like, here's all the settings that have changed. Here's what they are on this file you're trying to bring in, and here's what they are on your live site. And so if anything, so what is different though, you can say, okay, yes, I want to take this one. Yes, I want to take this one. Yes, I want to take this one. Ooh, no, this the one live right one. I'll take this one. <laughs> as in move them over to the oh, site, okay. not as in you personally right, get them. Um, but, and so you might go, oh, no, the live one is the correct one here. You'll have to do some manual work there, but you mm -hmm. can see a nice side-by-side -side list of exactly what has changed, you know, what it's going to change, and you can just pick as you go through them. Um, and get exactly what you want versus having to remember them, manually do them later, mm -hmm. not know that something else has been changed and that you're overriding it. Okay. Kind of thing. And so you go through and it's 
it's nice, it's graphical, you know, it's red green stuff as it goes along there, you know, this is gonna work good, this is a new setting, this is a removed setting. Um, and that covers a lot of stuff too, like it's not just, you know, email and config and stuff like that. That can be entire views, you know, anything that can be stored in configuration stuff, which in Drupal 8 is a lot. It's almost all the display and layout of most of your sites. Anything that can be configured through the user interface mm -hmm. um, comes through there. So it, it, yeah, it's it, most of what you're saying. So are we talking a developer management. is the one going in and doing this, or is this a site admin as well? So this can be both. This can definitely be a site admin thing, mm -hmm. and it's actually probably more powerful for the site admin um, because developers could kind of get around a lot of it with you know building it into modules and updates and that, mm -hmm. but. Uh, site admins really couldn't um, because you just had to, to write a list down and manually redo them. Whereas now they can pull all these changes, go through the list, you know, uh, figure out what they need to, to go up and whatnot through a graphical interface and everything that they couldn't before. That, that totally didn't exist at all. So um, it's probably most powerful. It helps everyone, but it's probably most powerful for the site admin. It gives them that extra bit of functionality um, that they just didn't have before. Okay. Is there mm -hmm. anything else that you have in terms um, of your list there? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the, the biggest stuff. Um, I guess the there's a couple other little things that we'll touch on that, that are cool for config management that might get a little more technical, but, but they're nice bits. Um, is with the way this config management works is you can also make site-specific overrides. So you can say in like your settings file, oh, um, for my dev site, I want these settings to apply. Mm -hmm. um, and you can have them automatically. So you go, okay, always override these settings with these custom ones I've set. And so an example where you do that would be like, oh, whenever we're sending out emails, mm -hmm. you know, don't send them to the, the customer service email, you know, send them to my testing email so that when you're doing something on the dev server, it doesn't go out. And instead of having to worry about, oh, you pull down a database, you have to change that each time you pull a new database down, mm -hmm. that's um, like written right into your settings file and it just overrides it always in your dev environment. Um, so, so that's, um, it's not so much that it saves time, but it saves that screw up of you accidentally sending a bunch of fake testing data to, to some live place to, to like a that. client or to your customer service people. And then they're all mixed mm. up because you've just sent them 50 orders that don't actually exist in the system or yeah. something. And, and it, it avoids all that. Or, or, you know, you want to have uh, testing API keys. So like when you, when you, maybe you want to hook to PayPal's testing gateway mm -hmm. and your testing setup versus live, you don't have to, every time you pull the database down, go in and switch the settings or be like, oh, it doesn't work. Why doesn't I'm it sure work? that mistake has never happened oh, before. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever gone through a client demo and then been been trying to demo the checkout and been like, oh, it's actually the live one that we can't go through right now. So just imagine what the rest of it looks like. Um, uh, no, so you can you can build that right in. So it will just always do um, the one you want. And it, it has nothing to do with moving content back and forth, copying databases. It's it's hard coded right into your unique setting file for those environments. So, That's a bit of a dream um, for anyone doing you know testing or trying to just make sure something works before they yeah, actually push it. it, it right? doesn't it doesn't help the site admin or something like mm -hmm. that as as much. Maby um, maybe the the site admin that's doing some changes and things like that. But it's very helpful for the developer and it's helpful for you as the as the site owner because it doesn't hopefully prevent screw ups. A lot of the config management stuff is to to give some more process behind this and. and prevent screw ups and, and changes where someone can forget something and everything can sort of go well, wrong. I think that's fair, right? Because mm -hmm. you know, if you have an inter enterprise type client or someone selling millions of dollars, the last mm -hmm. thing you want to do is accidentally send out an email to a client or you know, if your customer service team is 500 people, how do you even know that, you know, yeah, the depending on the test you run, you might send out 1000 emails, 10,000 yeah. emails by mistake, you know, <laughs> that can be pretty bad right? sure. like that that can be you know cause a problem or you can process a bunch of transactions through something you didn't intend to or whatever mm -hmm. um so yeah it, it's really to prevent those screw-ups that don't happen very often but can be really quite bad when they do so right. um that's pretty much it there's one last little thing mm -hmm. um that's a bit technical but i i do want to talk about it um drupal 8 now has the ability to have uh, what they call sort of config entities so anything before that was config was just sort of a uh, single uh, variable essentially so it was like you know uh, email is this or something it was it was a one-to-one -one ratio whereas with config entities you can actually have sort of a whole set of config so like a content type you know can have a whole bunch of attributes attached to it you know it has a title it has a description mm -hmm. you know it can have price it has an author it has all these things you can do the same kind of setup in uh, Drupal for config items. So you can have a, a config sort of unit that will have a whole bunch of individual parameters with it. So you can take that whole section and move it around. And so it just lets you organize things better. Oftentimes people would, to sort of try to do that, they would 
use and make an entity within Drupal and use it for config. But traditionally, entities in Drupal were meant to be content. You know, they were meant to be something that was sort of viewed out to the user. They weren't, and you were meant to make lots of them, you know, like products or something. They weren't meant to be like a single config item. People would use entities for that, but they were very much shoehorning functionality that wasn't supposed to be doing that into config, but because that was just the sort of option that they had. And so now we get a bunch of that functionality specifically designed for config to work properly. Right on. That way. So it doesn't affect the site user much. It's more helpful for the developer. Um, but that's just an extra piece that they added on. We want to make sure to get in here. Actually sounds like a pretty good change overall. Well, something that didn't exist before and it's yeah, it, it just awesome. it used to be like you would have a list of you know forty different options for this module, and it would yeah. just be a big huge list, and it, with no organization, and so you'd be like, okay, what? And and the naming would start to get screwy for them because it's it's just you know it's imagine if you just take a document or something and you have no formatting and you just yeah. you just spewed it out in one big paragraph. It's kind of like that, and so it just adds structure and that it just makes everything cleaner and nicer to work with. Right on. Um, why don't we kind of throw a summary here? Too long didn't read. Yeah, I mean the big thing is. It, you, configuration management, so you can actually manage the config. You can move it between environments. Um, you can keep track of where it is. It's not just done in your head and random, you know, check boxes all over the place. You can, you know, with a process and organization, you can do changes, move them up in a coherent manner. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions or comments, do so below, and please subscribe to our channel. Yeah. Also, uh, follow us on Facebook and uh, read our blog at acromedia.com and follow me on Twitter, Jason. Put my Twitter handle right here. And no, I got nothing.